<clears throat> All right, so next steps. Um, we are going to create the rotation, um, and then we're going to uh, remap the curve, which will loft a surface to, and then you know, we can look at it in different ways. So anyway, uh, the, the rotation is very, very important. The rotation that we're going to use, well, let's take a look at which rotations we could possibly use. Under Transform and under Euclidean, um, we have uh, a couple of different types. We have a rotate via a plane. Um, we actually do have a plane that we can use as our rotator. Um, that would be the frames. A frame is essentially the same thing as a plane, right? It has an X, a Y, and a Z axis. Um, we could use that. I actually used this. Um, I actually used Rotate 3D and I extracted the vector individually, but I think I want to use Rotate Object in a Plane. Let's try it. It might be simpler. So um, let's use that. And it's going to ask for, yeah, rotated geometry. Angle plane. OK, that should work. Um, so the it's going to ask for the geometry, the angle in radians. So we'll have to transition into radians. And then the rotation plane. So simply put, the rotation plane obviously is going to be our um, frames as a list. And I want you to pay close attention to this real fast. The frames are coming out in groups of five. And so I'll put a, a watch panel, or not a watch panel, that's a dynamo term. Um, I'll put a panel on this so that you can see what that looks like. So we've got groups of five. So that'll come down here. Then um, the uh, angle is going to be fed in from the uh, distance value, which is kind of neat because the distance value, we created five of them. So how did we create five of them so easily? Divide. Yeah, the divide is all coming from the same number of subdivisions. It's a, it's a number that we applied to everything. So that's why they all match. So anyway, uh, the distance is going to be what we're plugging in to radians. Um, and just for the sake of keeping it parametric and being able to adjust it pretty smartly, um, I'm going to put a multiplier on it. So I'll go to math and operators and multiplication. Oh, you know, I'm not labeling these. This is under transform Euclidean. You guys feel free to call out if I'm not labeling these and you need me to. This is under vector point. And this is math and operators. So um, I'm going to put a multiplier on here where I basically just take all those numbers and I'm going to multiply it by uh, 0 to, say, 50. I'm not sure what it'll be yet, but 0 won't work. It's going to have to be more than that. Um, so I'll put it somewhere in the middle, in the 20s, somewhere. And so what that gives me now is this value, which is interesting because we have now 0 and then 59 and then 158 and then 59 again and then 0. So. <clears throat> the rotation, we probably want to delimit to, um, say, 90 at a maximum. So <clears throat> without, using, without using a boundary, right, because a boundary is going to keep remapping them to the same proportion, um, I'm just going to take my slider and bring it down until that panel reads something around 90, something like this. So 0, 36, 96, and 36, and 0. And then those <clears throat> are going to be what I consider degrees, right? 90 degree rotation. But the angle requires radians. So I need to go into math, go into operators, sorry, go into trig, 
and grab this one right here. It's uh, called radians. It transitions a list of degrees into a list of radians. And so when that's plugged into A, and we plug in um, the points also that come out in a group of five, um, the points will, well, you can't really see it, but let me turn some of this stuff off. Here we go. There. So now take a look at how it works when I slide my slider between 0 and, say, 17. In fact, I'll change my slider to be a maximum of 17. Okay, so sliding it all the way back, they're in line. And then pulling it forward, you see that they all rotate off of the original surface. There's your action. Yeah, pretty fancy, right? So uh, the point that we're trying to get to here is that I want to remap those points to have a common uh, line that I can then just loft right back to the original curve. Am I getting too far ahead of you guys right now? Yeah, OK. So I'll pause for a moment because I want to capture this last idea in this video. So I'll pause. You'll get caught up on these. And then um, I'll finish off the idea. <clears throat> All right, continuing on. So now we have a rotator. All we have to do is map the curve, loft the curve, and have fun. Um, so really, the, um, the remapping is just a matter of creating a NURBS curve. And that's done under the curve tab under the spline panel. <coughs> um, I think I did mine with a NURBS curve rather than an interpolate curve. So um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. So we go to uh, control points is going to basically just be the geometry itself. And there you can see it stretching. And it's important to use a NURBS curve rather than an interpolate curve because the NURBS curve is what we created here. When I grab this, that's a NURBS curve. OK, that's why it doesn't touch the top point. Um, so that's why this does not touch the top point right there. Um, and then. We don't have to worry necessarily about the curve degree because 3 is fine. It's just going to make it a smooth curve. Uh, the periodic curve will close it off. We don't want it to be a periodic curve. It's going to make it loop around and try and close on itself. That's not what we want. Um, <clears throat> so after that, what we have is obviously our NURBS curves, which are right here. They're blended pretty well. And then we have our original top edge. And all we have to do is blend them together using what's called ruled surface. And it's similar to loft, but it's a better, more kind of developable surface kind of thing. So if you go to uh, surface and freeform and ruled surface, it's going to create a surface between two curves. It's just like loft in that sense. And really, all it has is it has an A input, it has a B input. You put the uh, curve on, you put one of the curves on the B input, and then you put the um, other curve, which would be this list item. Slide that down a little. Uh, this list item right here, pull that out, zoom in over here, put it on rule surf, and this may happen to you. So if this happens, Looks a little crazy, right? I know, Yiying, she thinks it looks so cool. Um, if this happens, what's happening to you is that your top curve is being read in one direction, and your bottom curve is being read in the other direction. So the start points are on other, uh, opposite ends of the face. So we have to flip one so that it reads the other way. And you do that by, I'm not labeling these again. <clears throat> surface freeform. You do that by going into 
Oh, sorry. Splang. You do that by going into uh, the curve tab and under, is it utility? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, I put it actually in before vertices. I, I was looking for reverse the curve, but it's really not the curve I need to reverse. It's the order of points that created the curve. Okay, so you go to set and list and you do a reverse list. Does that make sense to you guys that way? So I mentioned the way I described it, right? One curve was going a certain direction. The other curve was going another direction. So that means that it's reading the points of those curves in a particular order. So the reason I put it, um, I'm going to be putting it before the NURBS curve is created is so that I can basically just take my starting points and my ending points and everything in between and just flip the whole thing so that they're on the same side. Um, so anyway, under set list, I'm going to do reverse list and G is going to plug in to V and there you go. Pretty fascinating, right? I'll answer for you. It's pretty fascinating. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so anyway, at this point, right, you've pretty much got the entire thing for the basic form. And so now you have the ability to close it. And let me get kind of in front of it because that's where it's really fun, right? This is where it gets really cool. So you can close it almost all the way or all the way. Uh, I got to turn old stuff off like that. There you go. So that's closed all the way. And then you can peel it open like this. Woo. And in fact, I think I want to go a little bit more than 90 degrees in order to get more openness. So I'll increase my multiplier up to a potential 30. Now I'm going to keep exploring. So as I pull it up, it gets open, 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 open and close, open, close, open, close. I mean, that's pretty fascinating, and at least it is to me anyway. So um, with that, uh, you're pretty much able to start um, developing hardware on this thing. You just kind of offset it to thicken it a little bit, and it creates an actual material panel. And then um, you start developing the armature that goes on the sides to hold it up. We'll get into that stuff a little bit later on. Okay, that's detail stuff. We're trying to just understand how to do general geometry at this point. <clears throat> um, if you just, I, I know that this is still the grasshopper version. If you want to um, see it as a mesh color to make it not red, I'll show you that real fast. Again, you've seen it before. Just to close off the thought here, under um, mesh and primitive, you can use mesh colors and plug that in like that. And then you'll have to go under params and input and do a color swatch. And that will plug in here. And if you turn this off, that's how you get this. But remember, it comes in a little bit triangulated. OK. So um, with that, what questions do you have? None? Wow. I really earned my paycheck today. All right, cool. Well, uh, so good job uh, keeping up with me on this one. Um, you know that you have a lot going on with design and with this class even, so I'm here to help you out with whatever you're um, supposed to be working on. I do need to see the um, items that I asked you for today, so I'll set up a folder for you to submit.